Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, Senior Editor for DE. Still reporting from under lockdown in San Francisco, welcome to another episode. I hope you and your family are safe. As supply chains come to a grinding halt and hospitals are facing shortage of personal protective equipment called PPE, 3D printer owners from professional service providers to individual hobbyists rally to get to work. Soon after the crisis, 3D printer maker Stratus has launched a campaign to organize its partners to produce face shields. Now, face shields protect doctors and nurses from droplets when treating patients with COVID-19. They usually include two parts, the frame to mount it on the head and the clear plastic sheet. As it turns out, if you have the right STL 3D file, you can print the frame, then mount it on a store-bought or repurposed plastic sheet to create a homemade face shield. This is exactly what Strata Sys started producing with its partner's help. Other 3D printer makers like 3D Systems and industry groups like America Makes have also launched similar projects. So if you're a 3D printer owner who wants to get involved and help, you can check out some of the links published in the text version of this report down below. The Columbus, Ohio-based CAMS, which stands for Columbus Advanced Manufacturing Systems, is also making face shields and donating them to healthcare workers. Here is CAMS CEO Jeff Trevaro. We're a company located in the Midwest, and we provide uh, engineering solutions to manufacturing and design companies, things like software and 3D printers. And we have uh, partnered with our customer, Rogue Fitness, to help support their efforts uh, to create these face shields for first responders and medical professionals. Rogue is sending these things out for free to hospitals all around the country. Uh, Rogue is also in the process of creating some hard tooling. They'll have molds coming in in a couple of weeks. But right now, there's still a need for more people to be printing these. So if you have a 3D printer or you know someone who does or you'd like to have one, then uh, let us know and you can join in this effort. If you go to our website, www.cutmetalfast.com. Uh, there will be a page that has all the details. We can send you the file. You can download the file, and uh, we'll give you a different options for that as well. Um, a big thanks to the people who have already joined in. So appreciated. Um, it's a tough time in our country, but in every crisis, there's opportunity, and this is an opportunity to serve and to grow, and there's other opportunities to learn. So Techie and YouTuber Joel Telling was asked by a friend, who happens to be an emergency room nurse, to make some face shields because her hospital's running low on them. Here's what happens next. My buddy Eric Cedarberg at 3D Verkstan designed a face shield that used almost like a visor and a plastic sheet in front. And I said, would this work? And she said, that would totally work. I then reached out to 3D Verkstan on Twitter and I was like, yo, can I get this model? I've got someone who needs it. And they said to work with Eric and they, they eventually sent it over and I was like, yes, thank you. They sent over their A6 hole punch version. It has four sets of pegs on either side to hold the plastic down because they're using an A6 style hole punch and I printed it out and it, it looked great. In talking to Eric, I said, Eric, I don't have an A6 hole punch here in Seattle. Is there any way that you could remodel this and make it so it would accept uh, a three hole punch version? And he said, ah, you're silly US standards, but he said he would get to work on it. What Eric did was use the three hole punch, but then used it to make six holes in the plastic by use of a little spacer. You add on that hole punch and sure enough, it worked great so you can see there's two pegs up front two on either side the plastic holds really well and then I can put it on my face I can put it on my face and I just use some scissors to kind of trim the sides it worked it worked great hey Joel I just got to work I'm testing out my new face shield that you got me it's working great um we just got an email from our employer saying that we're almost out of these masks we have potentially days left so um, people are making their own, and this one that you created for me is working out great. It barely fogs at all, if at all. Um, it offers a lot more protection than our other glasses. Let me show you what our other alternative is. You can see it doesn't cover my face or have any of the wraparound stuff. It doesn't cover my mouth. The one you made me doesn't have foam on it. The ones we have been using had foam here that if we're supposed to share these or um, reuse them, harbor bacteria, sweat, all kinds of yucky stuff. So this is really great. I love that you made it for us. 
Joel uses an open source design printer from Prusa Research and another one from Rise 3D. He can churn out about 15 visor frames per day, and he has donated a few hundreds to local hospitals so far, he said. A lot of tech firms capable of producing PPE are now accepting direct orders from hospitals. This includes Fictif, an on-demand manufacturing service provider, and Carbon, a 3D printer developer. Carbon is partnering with Adidas to print face shield frames using its digital light synthesis technology. For the frames, the company uses the same material used in 4D printed footwear, co-created by Carbon and Adidas. Carbon is now producing 18,000 PPE face shields per week, according to the company. Carbon plans to make the printable 3D file open source so anybody with a compatible printer can print it. Carbon is also producing testing swabs to increase the volume of tests possible to identify people with coronavirus. The company says it will scale up to a million swabs per week. Some simulation software vendors have been using their technology to better understand what happens when you sneeze or if you fail to maintain the recommended social distancing protocols. Here is Deso System sneeze simulation done with Simulia Power Flow. The simulation are based on first principle physics, and the animation demonstrates how sneezing transports droplets from one individual to another, and how the shield provides a certain level of protection during the event. Ansys has also created a number of video clips. This one shows how a face mask with proper nose clip prevents much of the droplets or particles from coming in contact with the healthcare worker. This one shows various contact scenarios and social distancing. It shows side-by-side -side jogging compared to following behind another jogger. This is research done by Professor Bart Blocken and Fabio Malizia at Eindhoven University of Technology and KU Leuven University. Previously, they used similar methods to analyze the effects of different riders' positions in a peloton cycling event. For more news on how engineers are joining the fight against COVID-19, go to Digital Engineering 24-7. That's digitalengineering247.com. Follow us on Twitter at DE Editor and subscribe to our YouTube channel called DE Streaming. That's it for this episode. I hope you are doing well, whether you are under quarantine or under different circumstances. Let's get through this together and let's keep inventing, innovating and engineering. This is Kenneth Wong for DE. Until next time, bye-bye.